Well, good evening, Grace Bible Church. It's good to be with you again on another Pastor Cast on a Wednesday evening. I hope that you're doing well and continuing to persevere through this time. As we move forward, we have obviously some things to share with you, a lot of things that are going on right now that we need to address as we prepare for a reopening at some point in the hopefully nearer future. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to continue to urge you to be praying. Uh, as we've mentioned the last few weeks, um, this is a means of grace that God has given to us. So continue to be praying uh, for yourself as you go through this. Um, obviously, each of us, has, we have individual needs, individual concerns, and things that are going on in our own lives. Be praying for that, for you, that God would be working in, in and through your life. Be praying for your friends, your family, your neighbors, uh, co-workers, those that you know that have needs or, or suspect may have needs. A lot of people going through different types of situations that they're dealing with right now because of all the, the closures and what's, what's happening now. Be mindful of that. Be prayerful for people. Uh, be praying for your pastors as we continue to, to wade through this and to seek to make wise decisions as we move closer to reopening. Uh, and pray for the leaders that we have in our uh, city, our, our county, our state, and our federal governments, that God would be using them to make decisions that will be helpful to the church as a whole, helpful to us as a, as a nation even. Uh, keeping in mind that as the scriptures tell us that we make plans, but God directs our steps. So be appealing to the Father, be appealing to God that He would be working out His will, His perfect will, uh, to accomplish what He desires and that we would be working with Him to want to accomplish those same things and not against Him in some way. So be very prayerful during this time. You have plenty of time, so use it wisely. Use it to be praying. In regards to some of the updates that we have for you regarding missionaries, um, We've mentioned uh, several in, in our emails last week that we, we asked for prayer for very specifically. Uh, one of those was in regards to Fernando and Sylvia uh, down in Tijuana. Uh, their situation is, is heavy on Fernando's heart right now. Um, his family, as I mentioned last week, he has uh, several people who are uh, sick and uh, not doing well because of the, the coronavirus. Uh, about 15 members of his family that have, have it currently. Um, Last week in the email that I sent out, I mentioned that one of his uncles had died already. Since then, his uncle who is in ICU has also passed away. And he has an aunt who is also uh, very ill right now. So please be praying for their family. Uh, again, that Fernando would have opportunities to share the gospel as he has in the past, but that his family would be responsive to that and that they would seek hope and help from Christ and they would listen to the gospel and they would reach out uh, to the Lord for help and for salvation ultimately. Um, be praying for Sylvia, who, as you know from the email that we sent out, um, had a fall and a seizure as a result of that. And uh, she has had a CAT scan. They see that there's something that is wrong, but they don't know what it is yet. So pray for a good diagnosis that will be helpful for, for them to move forward in treating her and giving her help. Um, also for the church family there in Tijuana. Um, we mentioned last week that four uh, of the church family members uh, and even someone in Fernando's uh, neighborhood had uh, probably um, gotten the virus, the coronavirus, um, but because testing is very limited and medical uh, assistance is, is limited in Mexico, they're not able to determine that for sure. Uh, the four family members in the church, uh, they're getting better or are stable, so that's good, but pray that they would uh, continue to improve and they wouldn't get worse and that uh, even in the midst of, of them having to deal with this, that they would have a real gospel testimony in their area, uh, despite uh, having to deal with this type of a lockdown situation. Um, also be praying for Craig as he had his surgery yesterday. Um, the surgery did happen, and it will be a matter of time before uh, they know whether it, it did what they wanted it to accomplish. So be praying that it would be a successful outcome as a result of the surgery and that they were able to give Craig the assistance that they're hoping that it would, would do for him. So be prayerful about that and his recovery at this time. And then also we'd ask that you'd continue to pray for Pablo's daughter who was mentioned also last week in the email that Ben sent out. Um, she's uh, in the healthcare industry and she was tested last week for uh, the virus, the coronavirus. She was, she, the test came back negative, so she does not have it, but two of her coworkers were tested positive. Um, so she's going back into a work environment uh, that could potentially be a health risk for her. So be praying for her protection and for her health as she continues to serve people 
uh, well in the midst of um, dealing with this virus. Uh, obviously, we have other missionaries too, and I would not discourage you from praying for them uh, during this season as well. But in particular, keep in mind those three as they're, they're dealing with these particular situations. Now, in regards to us reopening, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. You've probably heard a lot of different things that have been uh, been happening from last Friday when the president made his announcement uh, about wanting to see churches reopen um, to the, the movement that started with 500, now is around 1,200 churches in California that are planning to meet this Sunday. Um, their meeting with the governor produced Monday, the governor coming out with a statement saying that uh, we're going to be moving into a, a reopening phase where he wants to see churches begin to reopen as well, uh, which is great. It's good news for us, but it's going to mean that we are now waiting to hear from our county because um, our county uh, has said initially that they're going to keep the plan in place that is currently in place. Um, but they're going to be meeting even today and having a press conference today uh, that will uh, say what their plan is going to be since the governor's plan came out. So we're kind of in a waiting mode. Uh, we need to wait to see what they will say and uh, we'll be moving forward from there. What does that mean for us? Um, one of the things that means is that we will continue with our planning. Uh, reopening is going to happen. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully it's going to be sooner rather than later. Uh, so we are continuing to move forward with making plans that will deal with some of the limitations and some of the, the uh, um, recommendations that are being given to churches uh, so that we can reopen in a, in a functional uh, but a safe manner that will make people feel comfortable and hopefully be something that is, is helpful to all of us as we begin the reopening process. So we're making plans toward that end. Um, we also would ask that you would help us by all of us together patiently waiting. Uh, we need to continue to do that just a little bit longer it seems like. Uh, patiently waiting for our county now to come out with what their, their plan is going to be for reopening uh, at least into this next phase. Um, so be patiently waiting for that. We would also ask that you, this would be something that you would be prayerful about that you would be bringing this whole situation to the Lord. Uh, not just that God would, would let us reopen, but that we would be wise in how we do that, that pastorally and as the office staff uh, deals with these different situations that we have to face right now, that we would be wise in doing that, that we would be helpful to people as we move forward. So be prayerful about that for us. Also, one of the ways that you can help us the most is by answering the poll question that was sent out to all of, all of the GBC members in an email. Uh, the poll question is very simple. It's one question. And what we need you to do is to get back to us with your answer to that question. Um, we need to know who is going to be coming back and when. Um, we want you all to be back as soon as possible. But we understand there may be some things that may hinder you for a while that will be okay for us to deal with but we need to know where you're going to be, what, what situation you're thinking about that will permit you to come back in a, in a comfortable and a safe manner for you and for your family. So please do take some time, if you haven't already, answer that poll question. Um, we'll, we'll be reminding you of that as much as we need to because we do need to hear from you um, as a result of what we're planning. Um, another thing that we're going to keep doing is we're going to keep preaching. We'll keep putting out our our sermons on Sundays uh, until a time where um, we are able to actually meet together again. We'll keep them on after that, but um, our focus obviously will change back to more congregational uh, services as we're able to get back people in the seats in the sanctuary, which will be a real blessing for us to have. But in light of that too, we also want to keep encouraging you to keep looking for opportunities for you to be preaching the gospel, to be sharing with people, uh, friends, neighbors, family members, who may be uncertain, hopeless, uh, just, just frightened during this time. Be looking for opportunities that you might have that the Lord would just put right in your path to bring the gospel into the light of somebody's situation that may be in a very dark place and they may need the light of Christ 
to light up their whole path that might even move them towards a relationship with Jesus. So be looking for those opportunities to preach the gospel yourself. Um, and lastly, in regards to our preparation, I want to share with you that uh, the elders have decided that one thing that will be helpful for us administratively is to have one pastor, one staff pastor, uh, kind of oversee the whole reopening process. And as that has worked out, that will be me. I will be the pastor who, who is overseeing all the different things that are going on with different ministries, different aspects of, of what we have to do uh, regulation-wise, limitation-wise, um, how different ministries will be affected and whatnot. So I want to encourage you as, a, as our congregation uh, to be please praying for me and the other elders as we move forward, forward with this. Um, but I also want to make myself available to you for any questions you may have, any, any concerns that, that you may have. Please feel free to contact me directly uh, via email, Facebook, uh, phone call, whatever you'd like. Um, I would be happy to, to answer any questions that you may have along the way. Um, it's going to be a long process in all likelihood. Uh, it probably will be months that we'll be having to manage what reopening looks like in the different phases. So be praying that it will be a smooth process, that it will be a God-honoring process, and that it will be something that will still allow us to be as effective in seeking to minister to you, the body of Christ here at Grace Bible Church, as best as we can. Because we do want to be honoring to the Lord. We do want to be obedient to Him in all ways. And we want to be reaching out to you and effectively leading you and shepherding you in the, in the best ways that we can. So pray for us towards that end too. Pray for me specifically in regards to just the oversight of this, that, that God would give me wisdom and, and good direction, good support. The office staff will be working uh, with us in, in regards to reopening. A lot will be happening. and We'll keep you as informed as we can, um, but be praying that, that pretty soon we'll be able to see each other face to face again. That would be great. Just in light of all this, I just wanna share with you a, a short bit of scripture that I think is applicable for us during this time and to keep in mind in a, a number of different aspects of what we're facing and what we're going through. This is from Ephesians 4, uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 1, reading uh, down through verse 7. Paul writes these words. He says, I therefore a prisoner for the Lord. And let me just stop there and remind you, this is Paul's mindset is as a prisoner. Uh, he's writing these words. Uh, we may feel prisoners in our own home right now. We may feel like we're kind of locked in and cooped up. and uh, We're not as bad off as Paul was. Um, but Paul says, being a prisoner of the Lord, I therefore I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each, of, each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. There's a lot of things in there that are helpful for us, a lot of character qualities for us to be walking in that would make our walk a worthy one. Being humble with one another, being gentle, being patient with each other, forbearing with one another. That kind of means putting up with each other. Uh, sometimes you get cooped up with, with your, your family. It might be a little tense at times. There might be a little forbearing that has to go on. There may, mean to, may need to be a little bit of extra patience between a husband and a wife or parents and kids. Practice these things. Make sure that these are things that we're striving for. Even as, as we deal with people in, in different conversations that we may have about this whole situation where you may have disagreements, be humble with one another. Be careful on social media to honor Christ first and to be practicing these types of character qualities in our life. Because these, these give glory to God. They, they honor Christ. And first and foremost, that should be our, our calling. That should be our desire, is to want to honor the Lord in all the things that we do. Remembering here, even as, as Paul says, that there's one God who's over all of this. God is sovereignly over this whole situation. None of this is happening outside of His sight, outside of His plan, outside of His purpose. None of this is a surprise to Him. So we need to be careful to walk wisely, 
to walk well. As, as Paul says, walk in a manner worthy of the gospel, worthy of the calling that we've been given. So I encourage you, I urge you, as Paul did, seek to honor Christ in all of your doings, all of your activities, with each other, with family, social media connections, wherever you're, wherever you're connecting with people. Practice these things and look to the Lord for your hope and for your help. Trust in Him. Grace Bible Church, we'll see you on Sunday. Have a blessed night.